the retirement cafe podcast episode 24 why age not define us with george lee retired or thinking about retirement you've come to the right place welcome to the retirement cafe podcast in each episode we bring you an important conversation with insight tips and knowledge all designed to help you live a fulfilling and successful life in retirement he is your host, Chartered Financial Planner and Accredited Later Life Advisor, Justin King. Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of the Retirement Cafe podcast. Today, I am absolutely delighted to welcome George Lee to the show. George spent over 12 years managing an award-winning design company and was voted as one of the world's top 50 creative leaders by the world's leading creative and innovation magazine, Creative Review. More recently, George co-founded the Age of No Retirement, an organization working to create a society that works for all generations without age barriers. Welcome, George. Thank you for joining me. Oh, I'm absolutely delighted to be here. So, yes. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, for, for, for those who don't know you, George, can you start by telling me a bit about yourself and your background? Okay. So, um, I am very pleased to say that I am over the age of 50. So, I can actually feel as though I can you know, justify talking about a lot, a lot of these issues. So, um, my, my background is actually as a psychologist, um, and I did that for, uh, for, for, you know, for several years. And then um, I actually realized that we could create more change in the world by, by design. Um, and design is not, it's, it's a complicated word because I think people are a bit confused about it. When they, when they hear the word they design, they think about just how things look, you know, the, the, the color, the shape of a cut of a jacket or the color of a car, that type of thing. But actually design, everything we touch, everything that we use is, is, is designed. And um, there's a great phrase by, a great friend of mine, but also a, a, a real mentor. There's a fantastic industrial designer called Patty Moore, who is now in her 70s. And she's got this great f phrase where she says, design can enable us or dis disable us. Mm. And that, that, that mantra has been really sort of stuck in my, my, my head and my heart for so many years. It's actually the world that we live in is, is not designed well, um, not designed well for older people, but also not designed well for, for younger people. And actually, how, so our passion is how we can look at everything that we come across, the products, the services, the places where we live and where we work, which work for people across all ages. How can we use design better? to make our life easier for all ages. Wow, wow, that's, that, that's brilliant. So you, you, you co-founded the Age of No Retirement in 2014. Yes. yes. Um, so, uh, you know, well, I, I, I'm a bit confused by this because a lot of the people I deal with are enjoying their retirement. I mean, the, the idea of the Age of No Retirement is... <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about the uh, okay, okay, so where, where it came from. So, okay, so the, um, how it initially started, I was working with um, Jonathan, my, my, my co-founder um, here at the Age of No Retirement, um, and this is before Age of No Retirement started. So I was working with my design company then, um, The Common Land, um, and Jonathan had uh, the most amazing business idea called Trading Times, where I was matching the skills of people who, who were over the age of 50, people who had the most amazing experience and wisdom and had made lots of mistakes but learned from them, but, but people who didn't necessarily want to or couldn't work full time. So you have this amazing wealth of experience. And, and then the idea was in how you could match those with local small to medium businesses, people who would want those skills but wouldn't necessarily want to take people on full time. So it seemed like a, an absolute win-win kind of scenario. Anyway, we launched Training Times, and what we found was thousands of people of, of people over the age of 50 were signing up um, with this most amazing CVs and skills and experience um, and a desire to, 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 to work in local small to medium businesses. But essentially what we had was like a dating site. You have people over the age of 50 and you have small, small to medium businesses. Now, you can't have a dating site if only, if only one part of the, um, the party are coming, coming to play. And what we found was that businesses just weren't getting it. Right. 
And what it became very, very clear was some very unscientific research because it was so powerful that actually what people were seeing when they saw 50 plus was that negative narrative of age. That suddenly at 49, people are still interested in you, but suddenly you wake up one day and you're 50. And then that age UK narrative of decline, of technological inability, um, illness, frailty, all of those issues were, were what potential employee employees were, were, were seeing. So we thought we've got to do something <laughs> about this. And that was really the start of the, the age of no retirement was actually how can we start to, to challenge some of these narratives around, around aging. Also, at the same time, we're having lots and lots of conversations with lots of different organizations, you know, and, and government and lots of people talking about what should be done. Um, but no one doing really anything from an action perspective. So the, the first, um, I suppose the first moment where the age of their retirement came to life was we put on a, an event um, four years ago where we invited um, everyone to this uh, an amazing building in the middle of on the South Bank. It's really, it's a great, I love the building. It's called the Barge House. And in a way, it's a building which refuses to retire. It's there, uh, warts and all. And then what we did is we brought people from business, from, from, um, from government, national and local, older people, younger people. But what we did is we brought designers into the mix to get people thinking differently around some of the issues to do with age. And, we, and over those two days, we had about 400 people people coming together and what we we didn't know really what was going to come out of it um, and what came out of it was about 3,000 ideas um, and a lot of energy a lot of energy to to think differently around the the age issue so that's where the age of their retirement was was born it was born from a real feeling that there has to be a new way of exploring age in a much more positive um, and optimistic way, looking at the opportunities rather than looking at the, 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 the negative issues to do with decline, frailty, dementia and loneliness. So that's how it started. Sure. And, uh, but I, on a commercial basis, uh, I could imagine that good product design, whether it's financial services or whether it's um, IT systems or actual physical products that we're using with this demographic um, of, of aging population, the, the opportunity is huge to make to make products that and, and services that are available for everybody. If we were having this conversation in five years time, what would you have liked to have seen happen in the in the world of product design? Okay, uh, well, I'm pretty clear about that. So a couple of years ago, when we got some um, some funding from the um, the big lottery, what we did is we did a big research project, and we wanted to look at what we had in common across the ages, rather than pitting, you know, w- what what is different between older and younger. So we did a big research project, and we looked at 2,000 people from 18 to 99 to find out what we have in common. And it's incredible, you know, 86% of all ages do not want to be defined by their age. 86% of people want to hang out with. People people of um, um, different generations, and it's our values and our needs and our interests which define us, um, not our age. Also, as part of the research, we created what we're calling our 10 principles of intergenerational design. Um, So these are, you know, there are some obvious ones there, things like accessibility, but there are also ones in there such as human connection, safe and secure, um, delight, you know, do do these, do the the things we use make us feel, you know, um, are are they a joy to use? And what we found was that, um, 86% of all ages wanted to see these design principles, but only 16% of all ages felt that the the, the world that they were in and that they were the products and services which were serving them at the moment were not addressing these issues. Mm. So there is a massive opportunity for business to innovate um, across an ageless design agenda. So what I would like to see in five years' time is that our design principles have actually got into the psyche of marketeers, product designers, business leaders, government, housing developers, town planners, to understand that actually designing from an ageless perspective is not only good for for business, because it really is the opportunities there, but actually will benefit all of us across all ages. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I can see um, I can see some parallels of things that I understand um, 
when I look at, uh, for heaven's sake, if we look at the um, Apple iPad that I'm a big fan of, and I see my young children using very easily without even blinking, but I also see my elderly relatives using again with, exactly. with, with absolutely really you know initial kind of fear and then within about five minutes kind of flipping around and tapping button tapping the icon exactly. and, and, and flying through the thing and you suddenly go hold on they've really worked this out haven't they they really thought about how do we have exactly. a how do we how do we put something together that goes right across the ages um, exactly and it's because they've absolutely inbuilt design thinking into the very heart the dna of what apple do and and as as you said because it's very very good design it's intuitive i mean no one is going to complain about a computer which is more intuitive and easier to use and because it is easy to use whether you're six month old baby or as you said you know like 102 year old actually get using a computer for the first time it is intuitive so actually it makes great business sense and that's one of the reasons why apple is so successful what's extraordinary though is how few businesses have got their head around this. Still, most businesses focus on millennials or, or, or younger people who, as we know, that the, the, the wealth is not in that particular area. There is a, I would say, a new, really quite insidious narrative, which is now sort of emerging to sort of replace the older people are all in decline to the all older people have got the money. So actually, let's go after all the, the, the boomers. Again, it's another cul-de-sac way of thinking. Really, businesses have to think from an intergenerational or an ageless perspective. That is where you are going to create wealth for businesses, but also a really great experience for, for customers. Yeah, I think this great experience is huge. And, and one of the things, obviously, you know that I'm, I'm a financial planner and, and, I, and I, you know, I operate in the world of financial services. Yeah. And I, and, when I look at the banking sector and I see how there be how uh, older people have been served, you know everyone's been the, the, the bank, you know apps and doing this and doing yeah. that, etc. Some some organisations, for the sake, I, I'm quite a fan of the Nationwide Building Society. They seem to have, again, they, they don't mind how old a customer is or how young a customer is. They seem to just go, we can serve you. And then exactly. I'm looking at some other high street banks and I'm going, you're just not interested in this customer any longer at all, are you? No, it is, uh, it's, it's, it's extraordinary. I mean, and I have to say, you know, when we, when we did our research and, you know, our design principles and we looked at how the, the design principles apply to real life sectors. So we looked at 33 different business sectors. So everything from um, mobile phones to, to gyms to white goods to, to books to, to, to you name it. No one was doing very, very well. Maybe books, bizarre as one of the oldest communication devices was actually was was the only one in the top right hand quadrant where you'd want to be most people were clustering around the, the central axis but in the bottom right hand quadrant where you did not want to be this means this is the the this is where you're failing really badly you had four really quite fundamental fundamental areas so you had housing you had um hospitals and then you had um transport and then you had banking so actually um all ages are feeling that they are not being served well by the the the, the financial businesses so it's a real opportunity to think from a real innovative perspective but how we think about money from a multi-generational intergenerational lifelong way of of thinking about it and one of one of the things that we do do we do some consultancy work so we work with people like legal and general general and we were one of their um what they call is their critical friends what we did is we worked with marketing departments across the whole of the business analyzing the language the imagery that they were using to target their various products and what was so extraordinary in a very very short period of time they realize actually how ageist and stereotyping and how short-sighted they were in terms of thinking about actually what their products and services should be doing interesting very interesting so what would be you know when you go into organizations and you are advising them around this 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 type of work for the people who are serving people across the community what are the what would be the easy wins for them what would be the things that they could go you know let, let's what would the i don't know the thing that if you could go into one organization i don't know let's say you could go into um the other sector you mentioned for and take healthcare what would be the easy yeah. win if you could only go into the health sector for a day <laughs> oh gosh, right, okay. and, um, uh, and you had to make some impact what, what would it be Okay, if I only had one day, so um, I'm going to make it a very, very long day. I'm going to work 24 hours. 
All right. <laughs> That's fine. Um, yeah. I, I, one of the biggest things I, I, I think is a problem is the language that we use. Uh, if, if you go into the healthcare system, so we have things such as um, bed blockers. We have um, um, the, the elderly tsunami, you know, all, all, these, all these phrases and the languages that, 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 that we use. People use this language in such sort of glib, sort of like frivolous kind of ways, but they have such an amazing power in changing how we feel about ourselves. So actually, I, I would really do, I, I would work with, with, with um, healthcare providers to look at the language to make sure that actually they are not causing and stereotyping across the, across the ages. And, yeah. and that can be done incredibly quickly because actually you realize by actually using that, that negative language, um, it has such a powerful effect on our well-being. There's one bit of really fascinating bit of research, which I, I really want to share with you. And I'm, I've, t- I've told thousands of people about this, but it still, it still amazes me. So there was a a psychologist in the US called Rebecca Levy who did this massive big meta-analysis of perceptions of aging. And what she, I mean, basically, I'm going to summarize uh, this massive big research project, but basically what she she discovered that people who are more worried about getting older, so this is just their mindset, this is just the way they are thinking about it. People who are worried about getting older live on average seven and a half years less than people who are more positive. Right. And then she looked at that um, against things like um, uh, fitness levels, diet, made no difference. Our mindset is absolutely making us ill. And then I don't know if you saw, but the Center for Aging Better did a big research project looking at how people think about aging 70 percent of people in this country are worried about getting older so bear in mind what i've just said about the rebecca levy research is that actually we are thinking ourselves into illness you know this is what the nhs should be doing this is what they should be they should be changing their narrative and their language what rather from a decline to saying think better aging there are so many great there's so many great things about getting older mm. yes there are challenges but there are challenges across all of our lives i love what you said and i i think that the language you're absolutely right this bed blocking thing or what have you that it's a dehumanization isn't it of of, of of individual people you know that this is this is frida and this is molly and this is fred and this is you know these are individuals who are there's a reason they're in that bed um, absolutely you know maybe the system's wrong or what have you but there's a reason that a human being is there yes. the other thing that i the other great insight that i've just got gathered from your great conversation there is if organizations service providers like ourselves whatever environment is service serving people if they can help people have better lives that are more yeah. content less stressed happier um uh, less anxious etc and those those people live another seven and a half years because yeah. of the because of how you serve them to yeah. allow them to do that. There's actually a business interest there. This is not. This is. I mean, this is only wonderful for the human being that you're helping that, that to have a greater, longer life. But but we'd all like a client for a bit longer, you know, because of course, if you're Absolutely. legal in general or what have you, you're still serving them for longer, aren't you? Absolutely. If you're Absolutely. Apple, you're selling them another iPad, you know, so there's a, there's a huge common benefit to, to helping the human being that we're working with to, to, um, to have a better life and to be, yeah. To, yeah, to be more content in retirement. And also there's a quid pro quo for the organizations as well. I mean, you know, from our perspective, it's just a win-win situation yeah. in every every single which way. The problem is we are so deeply wedded to these age stereotypes and sure. age demographics. And actually, it's start, I mean, it's quite exciting, actually. It is because we talk about... A, a, intergenerational and ageist you know we, we've been going on about this for for you know four years now and actually slowly but surely things are starting to to, to change so um and a number of things which we're we're doing as consultants so we're working with um places like Ebbsfleet, which is the first garden city for over 50 years and we're looking at a completely integrated intergenerational community model which actually understands that human connections help us live longer and healthier but it's human connections across all generations so so we're looking at that and then the other um, initiative which we've just 
launched um, with uh, Peabody Housing Association and with the support of OpenReach is a place called The Common Room. Mm-hmm. Um, and our first one is opened in uh, King's Cross. And this is a place for people of all ages to come together and find their purpose. Because at different, at different stages in our life, we sometimes feel a little bit lost. So, you know, you could be 18 and just left school or 21, just left college, or you could have just left your job at 60, had a couple of years of retirement and thinking, actually, I'm not ready to stop what do I do? So we're creating a place where actually we can get people together and through a program of workshops and networking events, help to define what their purpose is in this moment in life and then how we can then connect them with other people to maybe start a new business, a new social enterprise, do some, create some new friends or volunteering. But it's all about understanding that there isn't any age, there is no retirement age in life. I mean, there really isn't, you know, so actually how can we keep on living fully as long as we can from birth right through to death brilliant well thank you so much for today and it's been absolutely fascinating chatting to you before we kind of round up it, it, could you explain to our listeners how they can find out more about the age of no retirement and, and possibly if they want to get in touch with you Oh, yes. Okay. So we've um, got our website, um, ageofneuretirement.org. So please um, go and have a look on that. And what you'll find on the website is, um, um, as well as the ability to contact uh, me directly and Jonathan and the team, you'll also have, I think we've got about 200 stories on, on our website of people who are bucking the trend on the age stereotype. So please go there. And then also we have the the common room dot life, which is our new organization. So please 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 you know have a look um, and join up and I mean all I would say is that this affects absolutely everyone we're, we're, we're all aging so actually if, if we all become part of the conversation and all get involved then actually we can make a better world not only for ourselves but for our parents but also for our children and our children's children so yeah get on our website and join up lovely Brilliant. Well, that's been absolutely fantastic. So a big thank you to you, George Lee, for contributing to this episode of the Retirement Cafe podcast. Um, You can find all the show notes for this episode, along with the links to the website George mentioned at retirementcafe.co.uk. If you would like to let me know what you think about the points we discuss, please send an email to jk at mfpwealthmanagement.co.uk or connect with me on Twitter at Justin King CFP. And if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an episode. Simply head to iTunes or your preferred podcast player, or you can subscribe on our website at theretirementcafe.co.uk. So until next time, this is Justin King helping you feel more informed in your retirement. Thank you for listening to the Retirement Cafe podcast with Justin King. To find out more, you can find us online at theretirementcafe.co.uk.